I am a public health dentist, and I developed a life-threatening Clostridium difficile infection about two years ago that followed a dental procedure and antibiotics that were prescribed just in case I developed an infection afterwards. And I later found out that I didn't need those antibiotics, and that infection almost killed me. So I'm now collaborating with Dr. Pamir to present courses that are relevant to all of you so that we can practice safely, so we know how to prescribe antibiotics for prophylaxis, for odontogenic and therapeutic uses, reduce the risk to our patients, uh, reduce the liability to our practices. Really excited and honored to introduce to you Dr. Pamir. Thanks, Dr. Rowling. And just a little bit about myself. I'm a 1987 graduate of Ohio State University College of Dentistry, and I had microbiology as my undergraduate degree. I've always had an interest in microbiology and antibiotic use. I was fortunate enough to serve on the expert panels of the American Dental Association and the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons and co-authored the guidelines on appropriate antibiotic use for patients with prosthetic joints as well as the ADA's clinical practice guideline on appropriate antibiotic use for endodontic infections. I've done cardiac clearances for hospital uh, surgical programs for 20 years, so I've always kept up on the literature. And unfortunately, Dr. Rowling's story is not unique. We know in the United States, nearly 30,000 people die every year from C. diff antibiotic-associated infections, as well as another 35,000 patients who die every year from antibiotic-resistant superbug infections. That equates to nearly 175 people dying every day in the United States from an antibiotic-associated infection. Dentists prescribe nearly 10% of all prescriptions. So that means we're contributing to thousands of deaths per year. And we know that over 80% of prescriptions that dentists write are not concordant with the guidelines. And most are written for prevention. So in an effort to prevent an infection, we actually may be harming our patients. So many of you may have said, I've taken courses in the past, many of them probably by pharmacists or pharmacologists. And while they may know the material, they can't understand it or help you use it in a daily basis in your clinical practice. I'm a practicing dentist every single day. I'm also in the hospital today. I teach our residency program. And not only did I help write the guidelines, but I can under help you understand how to use them appropriately in situations in your daily practice, such as you have a patient who has had a joint replaced and their orthopedic surgeon wants them to use the antibiotic prophylaxis. The patient prefers to use it. They show up and they haven't taken it. What do you do for that patient? We can show you how to handle that. How do you talk to the patient if their surgeon recommends it? and you recommend against it, and how do you explain to them why they may be harming themselves by taking it? I can also help you to say, why is it important to better question patients about a reported penicillin allergy, and how might that potentially save their life? And it is a way you think that you may prevent an anaphylactic reaction. What do you say to pa a patient to convince them that they don't need antibiotics for an abscess tooth, but yet they tell you that their past dentists have prescribed them antibiotics, and magically, their infection got better and their pain went away within a couple of days. It wasn't the antibiotic. You need to know how to explain that to them. In this course, I'll cover antibiotic prophylaxis for patients with prosthetic joints, cardiac and other medical conditions. We'll cover uh, antibiotic use related to extractions, minor oral surgery, implant placement, bone grafting, periodontal treatment, and endodontic infections. I'll discuss antibiotic stewardship and how to better understand and comply with the current guidelines and evidence-based recommendations. We'll provide sample prescriptions as well as information sheets for patients related to antibiotic prophylaxis and therapeutic antibiotic use. After this course, you can be confident that you will be prescribing in a manner that is consistent with current guidelines and evidence-based recommendations. And you'll also know when it's appropriate to prescribe outside of those guidelines. You'll also be better able to communicate with patients on why an antibiotic is not helpful or necessary and why it may actually harm them. Antibiotics are not benign. They do a lot of good, but they also can cause a lot of harm. 
whatever you were taught in dental school may not have been what is the current practice today. So I hope you're able to attend this course and I know you'll find it useful for your daily practice. We invite dentists and dental hygienists to register for our upcoming live online continuing education training, March the 28th, where you can complete six live continuing education units. We will begin the day with the new dental antibiotic guidelines, four live continuing education credits, followed by dental pain management, appropriate opioid prescribing for two live continuing education credits. You can attend both or either webinar. Both live webinars are also available today as a recording for on-demand learning. To register for these webinars, go to dentalceacademy.com, tap on antibiotics, or opioids in the navigation bar, you will then be taken to the registration portals for these webinars. If you have any questions, you can reach us by calling 888-964-3976, or you may email us at support at dentalcenow.com. Thank you. We look forward to having you join us.